What's up everyone? Today we're going to go over maximum sum subarray. First we'll go over the input and the output, then we'll look at the divide and conquer approach followed by Cadane's algorithm, and finally we'll go over the complexities. For divide and conquer, what we're going to do is take the original array, have two pointers, which one represents the beginning and the other one represents the end, and we are going to recursively ask and break it down into subproblems. And we're going to split the array into two parts, the left half and the right half. And we're going to do a calculation for the intersection that happens in the middle. It's going to have two parts. One is going to be a helper method, which does the iterative midsection transaction. And the other part is simply going to be a left and right recursive call. Once we get answers back from the left and right recursive call and the middle iterative approach, we're going to combine them and figure out which of these is going to be the maximum. Cadane's algorithm, on the other hand, is going to be more about reusing our answer. And I'll show you with the diagram so it's easy to understand. But it's going to be building on a cumulative sum. The input is going to be an integer array and the output is going to be an integer. We have to find the sum of the subarray, which is going to give us the maximum output. In this example, Starting from 6, ending at 5, gives us an output of 7 because we are going to add up the numbers from 6, negative 2, negative 3, 1, and 5. A valid subarray can be one number or two numbers as long as they're contiguous. So it can be just a negative 2, it can be negative 2, negative 5, or it can be negative 2, negative 5, 6, and so on. Before I explain the diagram, let's go over a subtle difference between dynamic programming and divide and conquer. While both approaches take the original problem and divide it into subproblems, dynamic programming subproblems overlap while divide and conquer subproblems don't overlap, which is why in this case we have to take care of that solution which might exist in the intersection space. So for a maximum sum of subarray, we're going to actually iteratively calculate with for loops the, the uh, contiguous sum in the subarray around the pivot, which is where the intersection lies between the subproblems. So each one of these bars represents a for loop, which we're going to, well, it's going to represent a calculation by the for loop of the subarray starting from this midpoint. So the left side is going to be a for loop, which includes the midpoint and everything on the left, whereas the for loop on the right is going to be after the midpoint all the way to the end. This diagram represents how we're taking the array and splitting it up for our divide and conquer. So the red represents the midpoint. It's always going to be one integer. And the left subarray that we use for our recursive call is going to be inclusive of the midpoint and everything to the left. So as you can see, we're asking our max sub for this and we have a left recursive stack. So red and all the blue and for our right side, it's going to be everything after the red. So only green all the way till the end. So we know what we have to pass in for our recursive stack. Now for the middle, which represents the cross section between the midpoint, because keep in mind when we're doing divide and conquer, we have subproblems, but they are not overlapping like we have in dynamic programming. So how do we take care of this cross intersection space space? What we do for this problem is we take the original array and we use a for loop, one for the left side and one for the right side. And we calculate. So for the left side, we're going to include the red and everything to the left all the way till the number that's at the very end. And we're going to keep a kind of running count. So from here to here is one count, another count, another count, another count. And what we have to do is pick which of these oranges is the largest. So that's going to be considered our max L. Similarly, for the right side, we exclude red because red has been included by the left side already. The purple side represents another for loop for the right half of the array that we're going to iteratively calculate. So we keep a running count for the right half using a for loop as well. And then we have a purple, another purple, purple, purple. And we pick out of these which is the largest purple bar, and that's going to represent the biggest sum that we have on the right side. Then what we can do is take the maximum 
of max L plus max R, uh, which is one combination, meaning if we have these things being added up, could be the maximum, or we could, we could choose simply one thing on the left side or the right side. So this is how we're going to iteratively calculate what is the maximum subarray if we're going to definitely pass through the middle. Here's the divide and conquer approach with a concrete example. We always have three branches at each stage. One is the left recursive call, two, we have the right recursive call, and three, we're going to iteratively calculate the cross section through the middle. So here we take the midpoint and the left branch is going to be midpoint inclusive and everything to the left. And the right branch is going to be everything after the midpoint, so negative three onwards to negative six. And eventually we're going to recursively find out. So we are going to, so to answer this one, we're going to wait until this recursive stack returns and this one returns. And then we also compare it with the mid cross section. So for this case, the maximum sum is going to be when we take the subarray from six to five. Similarly, this is going to be split, split up into three branches and this one also into three branches. And when they all return, we're going to pick our final result, which is gonna come from the mid, mid branch. And that's going to be our answer. Cadane's algorithm is actually easier to understand than the divide and conquer approach. So what we do is we take our original array and we begin a for loop and we keep a cumulative sum of all the integers that we're visiting. So first we take this, which is the first integer, then we add the second one and then we keep adding and each of these blue bars or red bars or just a bar represents a cumulative sum. Now, if at any point our cumulative sum turns negative, like here, for example, if this was a very negative number, then the whole cumulative sum might become negative. In that case, we restart our cumulative sum from the next integer. So we start again here, here, and here. After iterating through everything, all we have to do is keep track of which blue bar was the longest. And that's going to be our maximum sum subarray. Now the code side by side for both approaches. For divide and conquer, as you can see, we've got a lot going on. We have our original recursive function that gets called for the left and right side. And we also have a mid iterative helper function, just called it mid, where you pass in the midpoint, which is the left and right pointer halfway, in, uh, halfway point. And then here are the uh, two for loops that we use to calculate the max L and right L. And before we return the result, we take either the maximum of max at max L, uh, max R, or we take the sum and that's how we get back our mid. Finally, after we get our recursive stacks and our midpoint called back, we see which one of these is going to be the biggest and then we return. Cadane's algorithm is a lot simpler. All we have is two integers and we have a max sum, cumulative sum. The cumulative sum just gets added every time and if it's ever negative, we reset it to zero. Otherwise, we keep track of the cumulative sum and max, max sum and get the maximum each time and ultimately return max time and space complexity. For divide and conquer, we're gonna have n log n, and for cadence, we're going to have O of n. I'll put a link below in the description so you can figure out how we use the master's theorem to come up with this time complexity. And for the space complexity, I'm gonna say it's O of n. I'm not counting the recursive stack as space complexity. I just mean to say we're not using any additional data structures to keep track of any states or something like that. So that's how you solve a maximum sum subarray. If you like the video, please thumbs up. And if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe.